How do you choose a date? Whose company would you enjoy? Well, one thing you can consider is looks. Like everything else these days, courtship has gone online. Can that so-called science really find your soulmate? But I've never been out on a dinner date before. I'm just scared to death. Online dating is now a multi-billion dollar industry. One in five dating relationships started online. But is there really a formula for love? It's 1959 and two electrical engineering students at Stanford are working on their final class project. It uses a questionnaire and an IBM 650 to match make 49 men and 49 women. They call it the Happy Families Planning Service. There are no long-term matches, but they do get an A for their work. It was the 1960s when computer scientists started to get interested in personal relationships, and in particular, they were interested in whether they could improve the efficiency by which people matched. Similar small data-driven systems appear, but in 1965, it's Operation Match that really starts to take the blindness out of a blind date. For $3, you can answer over 100 questions about yourself and your ideal date. The answers are recorded on punch cards, run through a five-ton IBM computer, and a few weeks later, you get the names and numbers of your top six matches. Computer technology has moved so fast. It matched on the basis of things that people had in common, so religion, hobbies, attitudes to life in general. And we actually know now that that's not the most effective way of matching people. Six months after the launch, 90,000 Operation Match questionnaires are received, making the company $270,000. In 1995, Match.com is launched by American engineer Gary Kramen. And then in 2005, a group of employees at PayPal create a website where people can upload videos of themselves to try and get a date. The tagline is, tune in, hook up. It doesn't take off. So instead, it rebrands itself as YouTube. Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. It's 2007, and the iPhone has just been released. Soon, new dating apps start to appear. Most dating apps are notoriously private about the algorithms they use, and that's because they use quite simple ones, and they don't have very much proof that any of them lead to better matching. They don't really want everybody to find love on the first hit because then they'd all be out of business. In 2017, around 40% of American heterosexual couples first meet online. And by 2018, dating services in the U.S. are estimated to be a $3 billion a year business. Lots of people anecdotally are saying they're fed up of using dating apps, but at the same time, business is absolutely booming. The number of users between 2016 and 2017 in the world doubled. Even though there's on the horizon the possibility of video dating and augmented reality for dating, none of those things can give you an indication of chemistry and you could only find that out when you meet somebody face to face. That's still going to be overriding with the way in which people meet and fall in love.